morning. Welcome to our March 7th Sunday service online here. I'd like to welcome LTC, Lifeline, and those who are watching this. I just want to say this week, this Sunday is going to be epic because we have an awesome HRT for worship. As well, we have announcements coming up. As well, we have a great sermon by Pastor David Kay that he's going to share a bit of a topic of how the term of blessing really means and how we can be a blessing to other people. So before we start our service here, I'm just going to pray for us and then we'll start our epic worship service here. So let's just bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for giving us the opportunity here where we can learn about you, um, embrace you, and connect with us online through our brother and sister out there. Um, I just pray that you continue to be with us as we're still enduring the tough struggles of COVID-19, but we know that you are there and that you have provided us so many blessings for us to endure these challenges. I pray you open our hearts so we can learn more of how we can be a blessing to others by hearing the wisdom and knowledge from you through Pastor David Kay. So I pray that you give us a good weekend and as well the good following week coming up. And yeah, thank you just for being a great and loving God. Pray. Amen. All right, we'll see you at the worship part. Christ alone. 
I count on one thing The same God that never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out
Let's close in prayer. God, in uncertain times, we look to you and we find what we need. We find security and assurance and understanding and direction. We find your presence with us and we know that even though we don't always understand where we're going, we know that you are with us and that is enough. Help us to stay with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining our worship service this week. Here's a look at this week's announcements. Today we'll end our service with communion. If you'd like to participate, please prepare your own personal portion of bread and juice. A reminder that you can continue to support the ministry and staff of LCC through offering. You can give your offering via e-transfer through your banking app or website. Details can be found on our website at lighthouseyyc.ca slash give. Tax receipt has been mailed to everyone who supported our ministry financially in 2020. If you have not received your tax receipt, please contact our treasurer, Kathy Tran. Women's Group will have a baking event on Sunday, March 15th at 2 p.m. More details to follow, please contact our Women's Fellowship Deacon, Huynh Hu, if you are interested. Worship Ministry is looking for volunteers for our tech team for our live Sunday services. If you have experience in technology or are interested in learning how to produce our online services and would like to volunteer your time, please contact our worship deacon Sam Fan or David Tran. If you have any questions or comments about our church events or ministry, we'd like to hear from you. Email us at info at lighthouseyyc.ca. And you can connect with us during the week on our Facebook page and Instagram account. Also, catch up on our previous sermon on our website and watch our live services and more on our YouTube channel. And as well, you can watch us on Telus Optic TV channel 879 in Alberta and BC. Our service will continue with a message from Pastor David in just a moment. The COVID-19 pandemic in Canada is serious. We must continue to practice all public health measures. Follow local guidelines for gatherings, maintain physical distancing, wash your hands, wear a mask, and download the COVID Alert app. If you have symptoms, even mild ones, stay home. Protect yourself and others. We've come too far to stop now. A message from the Government of Canada. Like what you see? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch our worship services and messages wherever you are, and share the good news to your friends online. Search Lighthouse YYC on YouTube and subscribe. from Lifeline, from Lighthouse, and everyone else watching on our YouTube channel or from our website, or if you're watching from TELUS, I want to thank you for joining us. But before we start, let us start with a word of prayer. So let's pray. God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. God, we pray that you will speak through your word today. I pray, Father, that we will have an encounter with you, an experience with you in our minds, in our hearts, and in our imaginations. That, God, you will speak to us today. God, thank you so much for everything. We lift this day to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, a few years ago, I, I was reading this book called Right Here, Right Now by Alan Hirsch and Lance Ford. And in this book, they give, they write this remarkable story about this church in Boise, Idaho called the Vineyard Christian Fellowship. Now this church was blessed. They blessed with a huge property, 22 acres of land. And instead of just building a church and just using it for themselves, they were able to do other things to bless the community. So they did things like creating this massive garden, this huge garden that would provide organic food. They would provide 35, 35 tons of food 
for the needy people around the community. They also had a food pantry. Now this food pantry would provide food for hundreds of people each week. Now on the other side of the land was a building called the Vineyard Medical Clinic. Now this clinic provides short-term medical assistance for people that do not have medical insurance. And all the, the doctors, all the nurses, they're all volunteers from the church and they use this clinic to bless the community. So when I read the story, I was like, whoa, I was floored. I'm like, dang, that's awesome what this church is doing. This church is really making a difference. And in many aspects, they're leading other churches. They're leading the way for other churches as well. Because I remember that passage that Jesus said where he said that Christians should be so good, you know, so good at serving, so good at doing great word, uh, work, good deeds, that people would praise God because of us. But this doesn't happen automatically. It takes a lot of intentionality. Um, and without clear intention, without clear goals, it is possible that we will miss out on God's plan. It's possible that we won't reach our full potential. But our Bible story today gives us the keys to making our lives count. We're starting a new series today in the book of Genesis on the life of Abraham, or his first name, Abram. And Abraham's story is a model for all of us of how we can live by faith and reach our full potential. So let's read the beginning of Abram's story. Our Bible passage comes from Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And it goes like this. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him. Our passage today suggests that to be a person like Abram, we need to bless and be blessed. We need to drive toward blessing others. And we need to be empowered by God's blessing in our own lives. When I was 16, I got my driver's license and I drove my family vehicle, this blue 1995 blue Chevrolet Astro van. It was an eight seater. So it was pretty big. And this van was, I would say, very Jesus-y. And what I mean by that is like everything on this van had some sort of Jesus symbols or uh, Jesus stickers. So at the at the front of her van, we had a Jesus loves you license plate. And then at the back, on the left side, we had a Jesus fish. And then on the right side, we had a dove coming down. And if you were sitting on the passenger side, on the dashboard, would be this Jesus loves you, or I mean, Jesus is Lord sticker, or this magnet. So it was a very Jesus van-like, okay? So I use this van. Uh, I use this van to help people. Uh, I use it to bless and serve. So in high school, uh, I, I would go to parties, and then after the parties, like a lot of people would be drunk, and I didn't want them to drive by themselves, so I would drive them home. So this is what I did. I'd go to all these parties, grad or whatnot, and then I would just drive people home that were drunk, intoxicated. Every Wednesday, I would pick up youth for Bible study. So I'd pick up youth for Bible study. After the Bible study is done, I would drive them home. When I became a youth pastor, um, I, I would uh, get phone calls from youth late at night and they're they were at a party or something they're stranded and they needed a ride home so i would go pick them up and drive them home and it was those car rides that i would have the best jesus conversations with people you know we would just talk throughout the whole ride about god about life 
And I cherish those moments. Even to this day, like I cherish those moments and those talks. Sure, maybe a lot of people will be like, man, you wasted a lot of gas money. And okay, maybe, but to me, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. It was worth it to bless someone, but at the same time, I was also being blessed by it. Our Bible passage tells us that God's plan for Abram was filled with blessing. There's so much blessing that it sounds like God is just repeating himself. But when we look deeper, deeper into the passage, we actually see a poem. The poem here is a seven-layered sandwich. It's a sandwich that helps us understand God's plan for our lives. And when we understand the poem, we can answer questions like, what should I do with my time? You know, what should I do with my money? What should I do with the opportunities given to me? What should my goals be? Now, when we look at the passage, the author gives the answer to those questions in the middle of the sandwich. He answers, you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. And then in the end, he re reiterates the same point and he says, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Now, in this particular passage, the Hebrew structure of this po poem, the middle line and the last line are the most important in the sandwich structure. And what you see is that both, both lines are all about other people. It's all about others. This means that God's great plan for Abram was to bless all people. Now, this is relevant because the Bible says all Christians are to carry or to carry on Abraham's work. You know, Galatians chapter 3, verse 7, Paul writes, Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. You know, the Greek literally says that those who have faith are sons of Abraham. Do you remember that song we used to sing in VBS? You know, that children's song? You know, Father Abraham has many sons. Dan, 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 Father Abraham, I am one of them, and so are you. And let's just praise the Lord. Right? All right. Let, remember that song? It was like, wow. But there's actually a rich and deeper biblical truth in that song. The sons of Abraham include all of us, men and women. And we all do what Abraham did. And that's what it means to be children of Abraham. It's not necessarily being biologically related, but it means to carry on this heritage. It means to carry on this heritage of faith and of blessing people. This is the biblical understanding of sonship. So for us, let's move to bless people. Let's be ambitious and creative. Let's have this mindset, this mindset every day, I am going to show God's love for people. You know, so often we're so enamored with ourselves or we're just thinking about only me that we don't have this mindset of thinking about others when we're at work, when we're at school with the people around us. So ask yourself, what is the best thing you can do for people? Like every day ask yourself, what is the best thing I can do for people today at work, today at school, the people around me? Like, what is the best thing? How can I serve them? Let's set big goals, you know, big dreams. Let's dream big dreams. And when you have big dreams to help people, then you're ready for God to bless you personally. And that leads to my next point. Maya Moore is a Christian and one of the best WNBA players um, in history. She's, she is a four-time champion, one-time MVP. So she was really popular and at the height of her success, she decided to walk away. And this shocked everyone. What? What? Why would you... Why would you do that? Why would you walk away? You know, you're, you're, you're popular. You still have more to give to the game. So when she announced I was just taking a break, people were, were shocked. 
And she was leaving the game, taking a break to pursue something else, to, to pursue something bigger, a bigger task, specifically helping people who have been wrongfully com convicted. You know, helping people that went to jail for crimes that they did not commit. Her godparents were a part of this prison ministry. And in this prison ministry, they met a man named Jonathan Irons. Now, Jonathan Irons was wrongfully convicted at age 16. He was serving a 50-year sentence for a crime he did not do. Now, Maya used her notoriety. She used her influence, her time and resources to help. Jonathan in his court appeal and she played a crucial role in raising awareness for his case and cases like his her work helped hire this defense this really great defense attorney that would ultimately handle Jeremy Jonathan's case and they succeeded in overturning the conviction Jonathan was released after 22 years okay Imagine that. He was released after 22 years. 22 years in jail and given a new life. Can you imagine 22 years and you did not even commit that crime? Man, crazy. Maya made a huge impact here. She made a huge difference. But before she could make that impact, she had to first hone her talents. She first had to you know, hone her influence to become powerful. Now, this was God's plan for Abram too. He had to first become powerful before he could bless others. So let's return to the first half of our poem. Now, in verse 2, God says to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. God blesses Abraham first. He blesses Abraham first, even though we know it isn't the most important blessing in the passage. The blessing of all people was the main point of the passage, but Abraham needed to become powerful first. The plan for Abraham was to be a great nation. You know, God promised Abraham that he would have a lot of descendants, as many as the stars in the sky. God wanted to give Abram many sons who would carry on his work. So the plan was to increase the number of people who were like him so that over time there would be millions, millions of people like Abram. But the Bible is clear. It's not just all about numbers. Okay, It's not all about just being big and large. It's, it's not just about numbers, but it's also about personal strength. You know, the Bible is con constantly encouraging us to increase in, in personal strength, like developing our talents, stewarding our, our influence well, taking care of our bodies, whether that's spiritually, uh, relying on God, uh, taking care of our bodies physically, being wise with our finances so that we can bless other people. So let's make sure we continue to get stronger. Let's also keep learning. You know, even failures, learning from our failures has great value. We need to hone our talents. We need to steward our finances well by staying out of debt, budgeting, investing wisely. If we steward well, chances are we will see success. We will accomplish great things. But as Christians, we have to be careful. We have to be careful because we don't seek success for its own sake, okay? We don't rest on our accomplishments and then become content that we're healthy and wealthy and popular. Because if you're only about yourself, if you're only about yourself, everything just revolves around you, your blessings have great potential to destroy you spiritually. So we have to be careful. You know, this is what happened to Israel. You know, in the whole story of Israel, God originally blessed them. He blessed them with so much. He blessed them so that they could be a blessing. But whenever they get blessed, they forget. You know, God blesses them, but then they forgot to be a blessing to other people. 
And that was their undoing. That was their downfall. So we have to understand that success and blessing is just a stepping stone. It's not the destination. It's just a stepping stone toward making an impact on things that matter, making a difference, blessing other people. So as much as we can, let's, yes, let's aim to be successful. Let's aim to be great. But make sure you are doing it so that you can be a blessing to others. So that you can be a blessing to your neighbors, people at work, people at school. Because that is God's plan for us. That is God's plan for us. This is God's way for us. Now, if we do that, God will give us a treasure that is better than any that the world can offer. So as we conclude today, God wants us to make a difference. He really does. He really wants us to make a difference. He wants us to make an impact on people's lives. So let's set our hearts and let's set our minds on God's mission to bless others. Let's dream big about things. You know, dream big about things that we can do for other people, for people around us. And when you have that dream, you need to be empowered. You need to grow in strength and cultivate those blessings that God has given you. But we have to be careful. We have to be careful because we will be tempted to hoard the blessings for ourselves. We don't want to give it away. We just want to hoard it for me. And that is the strong temptation. So we have to be careful. If you hoard the blessing just for yourself, it will eventually hurt you. But if you give it away, if you use it to bless others, then you will be living out God's plan for you. You will li be living out God's way for you. And in the end, he will make things work for our good. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your word today. I pray, Father, that we realize that you bless us because you want us to be a blessing to others. You don't want to just bless us and then we just take it and then use it and hoard it for ourselves. No, it's for other people. It's to make an impact, make a difference for other people. So I ask you, Father, to help us have that mentality, to have that mindset. I pray, Father, that when we look at our own blessings, Lord, that God, we will we will use it to empower us that we will work at it we'll work at our talents we'll work to be um financially uh well off or we'll, we'll we'll budget we'll do all these things so that we can use it to help other people so god i thank you for everything and god i pray you just continue to work in our lives in your name we pray amen Thanks, David. All this talk of blessing leads us neatly into communion, where we remember our greatest blessings of all. We remember that God has given us the gift of life and health and friendship and, and even greater blessings like forgiveness and the ability to be called sons and daughters of God and to live forever with Him, whose presence is life. And all this was made possible because of what Jesus did for us in one moment of history. And we celebrate this every communion. We celebrate the night where Jesus took bread with His disciples and He broke it and He said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the blood of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of me. As we remember these symbols, we remember the start and source of all this blessing. 
And as, as we study these things deeper, we find out that this moment in history uh, at the cross was, was actually the whole reason why the universe was created. This is why we exist. It is so that we may, we may be blessed by everything that came out of the cross. Knowing that, let's eat together. As we conclude our time together today, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Go in peace.